Welcome everybody. This is Information Service Engineering and this here is a little add-on for lecture number 11 Basics Machine Learning Part 2 because we want to give here a small notebook walkthrough for our k-means clustering example for that part of the lecture. Okay, so we are doing k-means clustering. Just as a reminder, what is clustering doing? Clustering seeks to learn from the properties of the data an optimal division or discrete labeling of groups of points. So this is not supervised learning. This is, of course, unsupervised learning. We have no idea of the labels of the data. We have simply to find out, to look at the data and to find patterns and put together things that belongs together. So this is then here clustering. For this, we are going to use a specific library. Here we use scikit-learn from Python. And um, in this Colab notebook, we will give you an example on how to use k-means clustering. Okay, so let's start with the very first code field. What we do here, we have, of course, as usual, start importing some of the libraries. Matplotlib, we need simply for plotting nice pictures, as well as here the Seabornlib and the NumPy we need for uh, number arrays. Okay, going then to k-means. What are we doing there? So um, the k-means algorithm searches for a predefined numbers of clusters, so we have to give the algorithm the number of clusters the algorithm does not find out how many clusters are there we have to use a specific choice if we are not happy then with the clustering of course we can choose another number of clusters and also you have to know or you can look it up there are methods to find out what would be a good choice of the number of clusters okay what else do we need cluster centers so a cluster center or cluster centroid is the arithmetic mean of all of the points that belong in one of the clusters. And usually in a cluster, each point is closer to its own cluster center than to the other cluster centers. This is the basic principle behind um, k-means clustering. And of course, we all know that what k-means clustering tries to reduce, so we know this from the lecture, is the so-called within cluster variation will be optimized and we are looking for an approximation or we have an approximation algorithm here with k-means to find uh, a local optimum for exactly this optimization process. Okay, what are we going to do here? We use an artificially created data set to show you how this works and then we are trying to work on a real world example. So let's um, generate some, let's say four distinct blobs of data that we then can try to find out whether the algorithm really also identifies these four blobs of data um, somehow and can distinct these clusters. And we simply do this in a two-dimensional shape that we can simply see the clusters and see whether the algorithm works correctly. So how are we doing this? So let's look at the next code section here. So we use here a sample generator and it's called make blobs and we do here generate 300 samples for four centers. And this is uh, the standard deviation. And we do this completely randomly here. And then we plot all the stuff here in a two dimensional uh, scatter plot. And uh, S is the point size here that we see. So let's do that. And you see, we have here four distinct clusters. We could have also done five. So simply to show you that we also can do five clusters. It would look this way but let's get back to four. So that was our original example. Okay, we have four clusters. So since we have four clusters and we know this already and the k-means algorithm needs the number of clusters as input, we here now use or import um, the k-means clustering algorithm here from the scikit-learn library. And we call here k-means and give here the parameter that we have four clusters. And then we fit our data x. So you saw here when we created the data, this was x here. Uh, uh, we fit it here into the k-means and then we do the prediction, which is y-means. So then y is also an array, giving you the number of the cluster in the end of each single point you have here in your point array. So these are the labels. They are generated via clustering on one, two, three, four. And let's do this. And it's only 300 points you see this was very quickly so we can't see it right now we have to look in this array 
And of course we can visualize this array rather nicely. So what we are doing is we are trying to color the single clusters. So we are giving each of the numbers there a specific color. And um, then we also want to uh, create cluster senders. You do this here with a k-means cluster senders algorithm. Then you create here an array of the cluster centers. And uh, these cluster centers, we also then want to plot here and we want to make them larger while all of the points, colored points have the size 20, the cluster centers here are black, have the size 200 and are a bit transparent. So this is what we are doing here in the next code section. And you see here four clusters and we have here the cluster centroids. You see here everything has worked correctly. Just try it out with a different number of clusters with a different number of points. And you will see how k-means is working. This was an artificial example. How can we now apply it? One idea to do this is, for example, color reduction of uh, real colored images. So a, a picture, let's say a JPEG, usually has 60 million colors or a color range of 60 million. And we could simply try to reduce this color range and to say, okay, colors which are close together from their appearance, we simply put them together, aggregate them on a single color. And overall, let's say we do not want to use 60 million colors. We now only want to use 16 colors. So this is a factor of a million that we are reducing the color information. So let's see how this works out. Okay. Um, since we need images and um, here the scikit-learn uh, library has for uh, testing reasons uh, two let's say sample pictures and of course for sake of simplicity we simply load one of these sample pictures here because then we don't need an external uri we simply here load the flower picture which is one of the pictures that is delivered together um, with the scikit-learn library and we load it here simply and of course we want to show it here to you so we do here um, we show you the image that has been loaded and this is the flower picture very nice nice colors 60 million overall will not be all colors but there are many colors and we want to reduce this to 16 colors so the image itself how is it stored so it's stored in a three-dimensional array of size you know height of the picture by width of the picture and then we have three colors red green and blue values and these intensities of red green and blue are usually ranging between 0 and 255 so this is usually how this real colored images in quotes are encoded here, for example, in JPEG. So let's have a look at the shape of the array of flower we have here. So if we look at the shape of exactly that array, so the sample image flower, its shape is 427 by 640 by three. This is the array. For the clustering, we have to reshape this. So we put all of the pixels, you know, in one dimension, and uh, the other dimension are then the three colors. So we transform this array here. So we have here data. First of all, we normalize it. So because this has values between zero and 255 and simply by dividing it by 255 as a real number or floating point number here, we will receive then numbers between zero and one. So it's normalized. And then we reshape the data into an array which has here um, height times width so this is then one dimension and three in the other dimension so this is red green and blue so we do a reshape and we look then here at the data shape and you see ah we have 273,280 pixels lined up in a one dimensional array and this we have three times for red for green and for blue so if you want now to see somehow how this color is distributed, we can simply also do a scatter plot. And we do a scatter plot here, not in two dimensions. We try to do it in three dimensions. We have a dimension for red, for green, and for blue, for all of the points, which gives you exactly the position of a specific color. And to identify the color, we can of course colorize the plots then, the single plots then here in these respective colors. And since we have many points here, 300,000 almost, we only take the first 100k. This takes a while, so if you take more pixels, then it will take even longer. So we restrict here these three arrays 
the red data, the green data and the blue data to the first 100,000 points of here, the red points. So this is uh, dimension zero or value zero here in the second dimension. Green, that is here dimension one and blue, this is dimension number two. And then we also create a new array C data and this then simply is the value of course of um, the color value that we have there. Okay, and then we do the plot and here we use scatter 3D plot and um, what we have here, we have the red array, the green array and the blue array data here for X, Y and Z coordinates. And then here uh, the color data will give the information in which color to colorize the according pixel. So as we see, this takes a while. And then here we have the result, red, green, and blue, according to these three dimensions. And you see here is the bluish, greenish, blackish, uh, let's say cluster. And here it gets much larger here in the upper corner should be white. And then you have here the yellow uh, reddish points that you see here, here below are the darker one, above are the lighter ones. So this is then the distribution of color points we have here if we are dealing with these 60 million colors. Okay, now we do a clustering. These are of course many, many points, much more than in our toy example. And we want to reduce the color number to 16 colors, which means we want to have 16 clusters. Uh, we choose to um, do, of course, k-means clustering, but we choose um, a bit of a more efficient algorithm, which is here the mini batch k-means uh, algorithm that we have here. So this is much similar, but it's more efficient than the original uh, k-means algorithm. So this means we have, of course, to import mini batch k-means and then k-means again. Our model will then be mini batch k-means and we give the number of cluster, uh, we have 16. And then again, we fit the data into the model. And then we are trying to do the prediction based on exactly um, our, here we do the prediction on our data for these 16 clusters. And here we also determine directly the cluster centers. And we simply do this here. You see this takes already a while. Of course, we have, oh, we are already finished. So almost 300,000 points in 16 clusters. And now we do the same visualization as before. And we should now only have in this th three dimensional cluster instead of 100,000 points. Of course, we still have 100,000 points, but they are now fixed to 16 colors. And of course, to the points of their cluster centroids. And thereby you see again aha these are exactly the 16 colors to which our original color space of 16 million colors has been reduced to pretty impressive okay of course we also now want to compare the pictures we're just doing that so this is then here the last code section you have here it's exactly like the code section before what we have to do for visualizing uh, again also now the recolored picture you might remember that here we have a one dimensional cluster with all of the pixels and then times three for red green and blue and we have to reshape it again so um, so the recolored picture will be reshaped accordingly and you see then the result that we achieve here we have the original picture as before, and this is the recolored flower with a new color. So these were the results of the new clustering algorithm. And of course, this was reshaped to the dimension of the original flower uh, picture. And then you see here, of course, in the video, it might look quite similar, but uh, of course here much less colors are used. And then of course the transitions are not as smooth as they are here, of course, in the original picture. However, it's pretty impressive that with only 16 picture, uh, 16 colors, the picture looks almost like a real picture, but I say, of course, almost. You might try this out with other kind of pictures and of course with another number of colors, for example, to get a bit more familiar and play around here with the K-means algorithm. So 
This was our unsupervised clustering examples. Part of these examples come here from the book Python Data Science Handbook. So have a look at it because they were generous enough to publish some code that we were reusing here. That was k-means clustering. And the next part of the lecture will deal with linear regression.